what a day it has been absolutely disastrous i don't care what sort of trader or investor you are if you've taken a look at the markets today you are probably down quite significantly for me when i have a look at my account value on exchanges uh, I'm probably down the average price of maybe a two or three bedroom house. Uh, it's quite significant, unfortunately. But do not worry uh, about the actual account value when you have open trades in the market. So we're going to go over this in just a minute. But first of all, let's just take a quick look at some of these coins here. We can see this is obviously this is Bitcoin and today it has gone all the way down to about $30,000. Just the other week it was up over 60. So, so it's a drop of about 60, no 50%, sorry. Uh, there's my maths not working too good there. So if we take this percentage tool here, you can go from the top of where we were, bring it all the way down there. And we can see that's a drop of 53% in and around there. And that is pretty big. That's pretty significant indeed. So this yellow line here that you see, this is the 120 day moving average. And if I scroll all the way back, all the way back to the 2017 market, right here we can see some of the previous pullbacks back then uh, this is towards the end of the market and they were only coming down like 29 percent 25 28 percent now if we scroll back down here somewhere this chart doesn't go back far enough this is a binance chart so it's not quite enough but you can see this big dip here where it did come down an awful long way and that is pretty much where I think we where we are today. So I'm going to show you a chart from, I believe it's Plan B. I think it's his website or at least somebody inspired by Plan B. We're going to take a look at some charts of that in just a moment so you know and understand exactly where we are in the market and why I haven't sold all of my Bitcoin and why I wasn't panic, uh, panic selling today. But today it hasn't really mattered whether you're in Bitcoin or any of the alts. You can see this is Aave. It's gone down a lot. Arda, uh, Ada, Ada was really big, you know, everybody was talking about Ada not so long ago. You can see just here it was topping out, came over the thin red line. So if you haven't seen this sort of setup that we've got here before, generally I would buy whenever it's under the green, sell off little bits here when it's over the red. If it's over this top red line here that you see, that is where I'd be looking to get out of a market, uh, particularly if it's the, if the price has come over the red and over the thin red line as well. That's definitely a sign to get out. And it came all the way down below the 120 day moving average, which was look how far that is. I mean, as, as a percentage there from the green red line where I'd be looking to buy back in, it came down 43 percent below it. I mean, if you've ever seen a screaming buy signal that is it right there. And Ada wasn't the only one. No way. I mean, pretty much all of them came down. Look at this. This is Atom. I'm not sure how far that was down below the green. But again, I think it was absolutely insane. So that's down 55%. This is a four hour chart, by the way. So we do most of my technical analysis on a four hour chart. And as I say today, insane buy signals. And for me, this is what it's all about right here. So this is the stock to flow ratio. Uh, last year, I believe I put a video up here somewhere for a calculation which I did based on the last few Bitcoin halvings where I predicted the, the price of Bitcoin would be going to, I believe it was 190,000. And then I found out about uh, his plan B's stock to flow ratio chart thing that you see right here. And he had it pretty much in and around the same sort of 200 to 250,000. And a whole bunch of other people are thinking the same as well. And I don't know about you, but today you can see this dip down. And let's face it, it was a pretty significant dip. There's no arguments from me that is a very significant dip down. But when you have a look back here at previous dips down on the stock to flow and, and even back here as well, you can see when you get into this sort of orange zone. And this is really just the, the point from where the Bitcoin halving happened and right now uh, where we are today. So we're in this orange zone where you would be expecting a pullback because we was right over the top of the blue line, which is the estimated stock to flow, the sort of average price where you'd imagine it should be. And it's always in and around that type of figure. So right now we have been over for a long time. We were way too bullish on Bitcoin. So we took a big dip down and I should imagine this is going to turn around pretty quick. 
And looking at another chart here on the same website, so this is the price projection. If you come down here, price projection, and I think this is the repeat pattern. So what it basically is, this here in the middle, this is the last like 1,000 odd days or whatever it is. Okay, so this is the pattern, and then they just basically repeat the pattern again. So you can see right now we've come down for a big dip, and this is not something which is unusual. We always get dips in the market. This is why they say buy the dip. And don't ever believe it when people say that the price will never go down, like it will never go under 50 again, there's too many buyers in the market, too many corporations buying in. It's always complete cobblers. I don't believe that's the case at all. It can always go down. And obviously today has been one of those days. It's come all the way down. Now, according to this, this would have been expecting it to come down right there to 26,000. Now, it hasn't actually done that. It only came down to 30. That's probably a good thing. But going forward from here, it's going to take us all the way up to, it suggests, about 268,000, which would be around the end of October, which exactly in line with that video that I should have shared up there somewhere, exactly in line with the time frame which I would expect us to be topping out, sort of the end of October, early November. So if you're worried if like this is it, if this is the end of the bull run, absolutely not, there's no way. I hope you didn't sell today because I don't think there's any chance of you getting your, your money back or your Bitcoin back at that price. I don't think we're ever gonna see 32,000 again. Now, did I just say that you should be wary of people that say stuff like that, but hear this reasoning. So back on this chart that you were just looking at, now this is just a forward projected chart based on the previous actions. And we would be, as I say, going up to 260-ish towards the later part of this year. And then we're gonna drop about 80%. That's quite normal, that is what happens with crypto. So even if we came all the way down here to the bottom part, you're only looking at about 44, 45,000. I think with all of the support that we've built up over the last few months in around the 50,000 mark, I wouldn't expect the price to fall much below 50 after we do top out at the end of the bull run. So I think about 45 to 50 is the most it's ever gonna go down ever again in the future before it goes all the way up to near a million dollars about four or five years time. And why the big dump there is always a reason, and this is what people are saying the reason is today. This is something put out by Reuters, and it's an explainer of what Beijing's, it says, new crackdown means for crypto. And obviously a lot of the American media is fake news. Donald Trump was saying it for ages, and uh, really it is, <laughs> it's all fake news. I can absolutely guarantee it because the, all this came in in 2017. There's actually nothing new here at all. In fact, it says here, look, reiterating the 2017 ban, um, which is absolutely the case. And it's not really a ban as such, to be quite honest with you. And strange timing, wouldn't you think, that something like this would be pushed out by the media at a time when Elon Musk has just sort of put some fear into the market with his tweets lately. The market did start to wobble and then all of a sudden, all of this stuff starts coming out. Why uh, is Goldman Sachs maybe, or JP Morgan, some bank like that, asking the media to put out this type of content? True or not, who knows? But I should imagine uh, they've been raking it in. So let's just say you had a budget of about 10 or maybe $100 billion that you wanted to spend on Bitcoin. A few weeks ago, uh, Bitcoin was up over $60,000. So really not too great at all. Everyone was super bullish and that's not really the time that you wanna be buying into a market like this. You wanna be waiting for the dips. And these guys, they know that, and it's probably exactly what they were doing. They were sat on the sidelines waiting for a moment to start pushing out some news like this to bring the market down. I believe it's a bit of a massive wealth transfer that you've seen today. Now, when it was over here, everybody was hodling. So if you were to put on that amount of coins onto the market and you wanted to purchase like $100 billion worth, then you would have sent the, the, the price skyrocketing up. However, those same Bitcoin, like lots and lots and lots of Bitcoin this morning, particularly when America opened up, you saw the prices absolutely plummet and loads of Bitcoin was coming onto the market and getting sold at record low prices. I mean, like the cheapest prices we've seen all year.
So let that just be a little lesson to you. So this is how big banks operate. OK, they're not going to pay the sky high prices. You're not going to be able to force them to pay those sky high prices like people like XRP hodlers believe they can do. They're not going to do that. They're not going to play your game. They will play their own games and they have a lot more sway with the media and they can push the market around much more than we ever can. And this is how they play the game. A little bit dirty, but it's all allowed in an unregulated trading environment like crypto. I don't know why I'm smiling so much. I mean, today I basically lost the same value uh, of like a two or three bedroom house, but never mind. I'm sure it's all going to be popping back up over the next week anyway. So if I scroll down here, you can see the profit and loss over here. It says we are still up for the month. And this is what you need to remember when you're looking at your Binance sheet today. And you can see these epic losses and your account value is down absolutely huge. You must remember there's a big difference between closed trades and open positions. So right now I've still got a lot of open positions and that means that if the market rebounds, then the value, the account value is going to go back up as well. Right now, based on closed positions, we took some real big hits today. I'm actually down now 2% on the month. So 2% on the month down. In fact, if you scroll down all these trades, it's currently 289 trades so far this month and scroll all the way down here to the bottom. You can see all of the trades now every single month. This is basically all of today's where it's took a massive toll on uh, what was some really good gains earlier in the month. So one of the questions in our Telegram group, which a lot of people have been asking uh, concerned with the bot is could we maybe bring in like Bitcoin USDT pairs or maybe Ethereum pairs instead? Um, so we've got a bit of a choice between if people want to trade in Bitcoin, USDT, Ethereum, or maybe some other coins as well. And I was kind of wondering how that would compare. Now, whenever I've looked at it before, I've found that Bitcoin is always the winner and you really just want to uh, concentrate winning on Bitcoin. So I decided to do a little test today and I've got to say it was no different. So one of the biggest concerns, obviously, is should we switch strategy from uh, trading Bitcoin pairs like this one here? This is Cardano and Bitcoin. Should we be able to switch out and start trading with USDT pairs instead to try and preserve some more of our cash? So if we have a look at this one, we can see that in USDT, Cardano has gone down minus 50, uh, 59%, whereas with Bitcoin, the Bitcoin pair actually only went down 38%. So just based on that, I would say you're better off with Bitcoin. You know, the pairs aren't going to go down quite as volatile as US dollars. But if you're talking long term trading, OK, um, what are the differences long term? So this one here, Tether and basically down here. So th this goes from. So we're starting out here with seven thousand one hundred ninety five dollars. And then it takes us all the way from. 2020 so the 1st of January 2020 in fact on this periodic table of cryptocurrencies I have here behind me I can see that it was 7195 on the 1st of January so that's going to make these calculations a lot easier to work out and then we're going to compare that with this one so this is Bitcoin again we're going to be going from the 1st of January 2020 so if I just bring up the findings here then you can see ADA USDT and this is pretty much the same on all 50 coins that we trade okay so you're starting off there with the 7000 because that's the same as one bitcoin down here okay and at the end of it you're up 2233% okay so you've now got 167000 since the 1st of January 2020. Now, if you were trading Bitcoin, you'd have turned one Bitcoin into 16, and that is only, only an ROI of 1,500. So by that, you might be thinking, man, you're definitely better off. USDT pair works every time. But the big difference here is, of course, that um, what is the value of Bitcoin here when you just had one and how much is Bitcoin worth right here? So if I just bring back in this column, turning that text back to black, we can see that there we go. So we started off with the 7,000 odd worth of Bitcoin. We then ended up with 600,000, okay? And that is a today's value for Bitcoin being at $37,000. Um, that gives you eight thousand percent over four times more gains by trading with bitcoin pairs 
rather than trading with USDT. So when it comes to the bot, for me, I'm personally gonna still be sticking with the Bitcoin pairs. And I know the bot is not exactly 100% with the strategy. There are still some tweaks we need to make. So it's still in development. It's not making all of the trades that it should be, but obviously we're working on it and things are getting a lot better over the last few weeks. If you've been following along, you have seen those changes. So. The good news is that if you're in the US where there, I think there's only seven Bitcoin pairs available, but you've got 20 odd USDT pairs. Well, the good news is that we are going to be integrating the USDT or Ethereum or whatever else that you want to use the bot to trade so that you don't have to just go with Bitcoin like me, but you can just make up your own mind and choose whichever pair that you want. And if you want to know more about the bot, leave a link up there, I think. And uh, you can watch that video, see more about the bot and how that works. And that is about it for this video this week. I uh, just got to say, just keep hodling, keep sticking in there, hold strong because in a few weeks time, we're going to be right up over 60 again. So hang on in there and I'll see you again in the next video.